what is the best part about being able to run Windows on a Mac? I can carry one laptop with me wherever I go, and it can be my daily machine, which happens to be my MacBook Pro. Is that a camera? Yeah. When I need to run Windows, if I need Visual Studio, for example, or test something in IIS, I can just spin up Windows and get to it. Now that Parallels 19 is out, Windows on a Mac gets a bit of a boost, and there are some cool new features for developers too. You can also now manage your Parallels machine right from Visual Studio Code and script out your VM management. But there's actually another reason why I prefer it. And before you think that this is some kind of sales video, it's not. This video is not sponsored by anyone. It's just me sharing my story. Let me show you something. This right here is a pretty good PC laptop. It's an Asus Rogue Strix. It's a gaming laptop, so it's pretty powerful. It's got 16 gigs of RAM in there and a Ryzen 9 chip. And here we have my MacBook Pro. I have Windows installed already on here. Again, if you wanna see my one-click installation of how I did that, it's really simple. I'll link to the video down below. Allocated four CPUs and eight gigs of RAM for this machine. Not as powerful as that machine. I'm gonna start it up. And there it is, it's already running. But that's not the test. I'm gonna start up Visual Studio on both of these machines. And let's compare how quickly each one starts it up. Native Visual Studio, Virtual Machine Visual Studio. Let's go. <laughs> okay, did you see that? Clearly we have a little bit of a winner here on this side. Now I'm gonna open up a Visual Studio solution, which is this Blazor app solution. They're both the same. Let's go. The virtual one actually opened up faster than the native one. Of course, this is not the top of the line machine as of 2023, but considering this is a virtual machine, that's pretty good. Check it out. I've got Visual Studio running side by side here, one on a Mac and one on Windows. This is not the Mac Visual Studio. This is the Windows Visual Studio running in parallels and coherence mode. So basically I'm using this on my Mac as if I'm running Visual Studio 2022 natively on my Mac, but it's not, it's virtualized. So why is this happening? Well, if you've seen any of my recent videos, you're likely well aware of how powerful and efficient the new Apple Silicon architecture is. The unified memory with this insane throughput of up to 800 gigabits per second, especially the way the OS handles memory. I actually have a video coming up on this shortly, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Running a VM or virtual machine can make efficient use of Apple Silicon resources without much noticeable lag in many tasks, including virtualizing Windows. This goes for Linux too, by the way, which I've also tested. All videos will be linked down below, by the way, where I have my tests. Check them out at your leisure. Now, I used to be a PC boy all the way back in the day where Macs were just too expensive and they were just toys that couldn't really do any software development work. And to be fair, running Visual Studio on a Mac used to be kind of impossible before virtualization came about. And then a friend of mine who is a SharePoint developer, something that only runs on Windows and you have to use Visual Studio to develop for it. Well, he bought a MacBook. This was back in 2013 because he needed to do some iOS development too. And he showed me that SharePoint works faster on a virtual machine on a Mac than on the top of the line Lenovo workstation. Really, he made a video about it 10 years ago right here on YouTube. Now at that time, I was also trying to find a way to not have to carry two laptops around, so I went for it. I got the 2013 MacBook Pro fully loaded and I loved it. Ever since then, I've been using my MacBook Pro as my main machine. Back then, all PC laptops were flimsy and they were plastic sticky and they creaked. The MacBook Pro was the first machine that I held in my hand that felt like a solid piece of metal that wouldn't break on me. It wouldn't squeak, it wouldn't squeal. It just felt like it worked. And as an added bonus, it ran Windows and it ran it very well. There's the flexibility aspect where I didn't have to carry two machines with me. There's also the safety aspect. Running Windows inside a virtual machine can isolate it from the main Mac OS, which is beneficial for testing potentially harmful software or visiting untrusted websites. You can spin up as many Windows instances as you want, as your hardware can handle, and you can take snapshots before installing any suspicious software that you're trying out or doing something suspicious that maybe not everybody will approve of. And if something bad happens, you can just rewind it to the snapshot as if nothing happened. So far, it all sounds great, 
but what are the cons or the problems that you might face? Well, with virtual machines, you're going to be using system resources. If you allocate too much RAM to the virtual machine, then the tasks on the host might suffer. This is why even though an 8 gigabyte MacBook Air can handle parallels with Windows running on it just fine, having a 32 gigabyte or a 64 gigabyte MacBook Pro is much more friendly to hosting virtual machines. There's disk space issues, right? VM files can grow quite large. The more software you install on the virtual machine, the larger space requirement will be. That's pretty obvious when you think about it, but sometimes I find it surprising when I go to search for some space on my MacBook and find that there are virtual machine files that are 200 gigabyte plus in size. This can be a concern for Macs that have smaller SSDs. Of course, I later learned that you can just offload your virtual machines to something like this. This is a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure with a Samsung 980 in it. I'll link to those down below as well. And you don't get much of a performance hit using that. Another con is the cost. Yes, beyond the free trial period, parallels cost money. If you're just playing games or having fun, then this might add up for you, depending on your financial situation. However, if you're doing this as a professional and you're making money doing development or using other software that's Windows only, like some CAD software is, then the price of the software is the operating expense. Now, I for one like options, but Parallels is currently the only option that offers the feature set that it does. We know that it just works. Sound works, peripherals all work, coherence mode works. What I think is a bit unfortunate is because Parallels is so far ahead of the competition for running Windows on a Mac today, that does play into the price here. Since there is basically no competition that can offer the feature set that Parallels 19 offers today, including one-click deployment of Windows, which I recently showed in this video right over here. I'll also link to it down below. And it's the only virtualization software that's actually officially endorsed by Microsoft to run Windows on a Mac. So the unfortunate part is there's no competition, therefore the price is going to go up, right? So I kind of wish there was more uh, competition, more things like VMware Fusion, but it's not there yet. There's also a free option like UTM, but that's nowhere even close. <laughs> it's, it's a pain to set up and not everything works with it. By the way, this is coming from a loyal ex VMware Fusion user, this guy right here. I just go with what works. Blind loyalty of a tool is not good for business. So right now, Parallels works and that's what I use. Is this for everybody? Well, no, it depends on your use case. Are you primarily a MacBook Pro user? Well, then this is good. Now I have recently tested Windows via Parallels on a few different MacBook Airs. And to my surprise, the base model MacBook Air ran Windows 11 just fine. But like I said earlier, the more RAM you have, the more resources you have, the better it'll run and the better your host will run while hosting a virtual machine or multiple virtual machines. But if you're primarily a Windows user and once in a while use a Mac for development or offloading, building an Xcode project, for example, then you'll probably still want most of your investment to go into a beefy Windows laptop. And if you still require iOS or Xcode deployments, then you have a cheap M1 MacBook Air or a Mac Mini, both of which you can now get for a really good deal. I'll link to some deals down below. If you want to try out Parallels, use my link down below. I'll also include a coupon down there. Check out my video on virtual versus native right over here. And I will see you in the next one.